Hi, I'm Denise. I'm out here on the middle fork of the Flathead River, just underneath the old bridge, which is the original entrance to Glacier. This seems to be the place I want to hang out. Plus, I'm on the other side of the river than I usually am, and uh, you can see a little bit more. Those are the rocks over there that I was uh, filming the last couple weeks. So, I just like getting out here and showing you what's possible, right? Um, plus, uh, you know, it's a it's a calm and balancing view behind me and you can hear the birds and sometimes you can hear the hikers or the bike, you know, cyclists um, over the bridge. So it's sort of a happy place too. And today I want to talk about balancing with these solar flares. Like, what do we really need to do to bring into balance? Because you know, and I've got my notes because as you know, if you've heard me go off on tangents, especially when I'm with um, someone talking really fast and loving the conversation, I, it's hard for me to stay on task. So I use my notes. So yesterday we had this geomagnetic storm. It, it settled in at about noon and it was fairly large and created a lot of auroras again. And this magnetic storm was huge, right? and it was preceded by an X-class flare on the 20th. And those, and that was preceded by two high-level M-class flares on the 19th and the 20th, sort of leading up to the summer solstice, right? So we're four days, five days after the solstice, and this activity started. And then if you wanna go and look at um, the Schumann, right? Uh, last weekend, Schumann, I talked about it as being just like, a long pulsing but what I wasn't able to research and talk about before that happened was the fact that inside each of those pulses was almost a DNA pattern and and it held at 190 for those who know the Schumann it will hit it'll spike at 180 or 190 um, for a half an hour 20 minutes an hour or two hours max right this thing held at 190 on the 17th, 18th, into the 19th, for over 48 hours, which meant that this downloading, this, this enormous pulsing was just pummeling us, right? Um, part of what happened when we had that X flare on the 20th was that we had a full uh, shortwave radio blackout in the entire North American continent, Alaska, Canada, the United States, Mexico. It was like a big dump circle that just like took it all out. And <laughs> it's just so unusual, right? It's just so unusual. Um, so uh, the reason I try to hit those markers is to let you know that the volume's going up. The frequency's going up. It's, and we're getting used to it. You know, when, when the flares first started and they would, they would hit C, we'd go, oh, what was that? What was that? And, and now <laughs> we're like, ah, yeah, that was an X floor last week. And we're kind of calm about it because it's not hitting us with the same sort of intensity or it's not knocking us off maybe, I'm not sure. So we have a consistent higher frequency in our environments that's coming in, right? Um, it's affecting our electronics. Uh, if you've noticed a lot of uh, odd things going on with apps, with um, online media, um, accessing it, uh, even being able to access some of your cell tower um, data, right? Or cell tower support for your phone. Uh, our nervous system is a little overactivated. Our nervous system is, is, there can be anxiety, but there can also just be a lot of flush in through our system. And systems as a whole, whether it's a community, our banks, our, um, our work, our, um, as my, in my case, all of my uh, television, media, everything is just sort of off, right? And, and so that's what's going on. And these activities are forcing us to operate at a higher level. So us, that's a theme, right? Is that we're going to a higher level and we also have to create balance as we're getting more, uh, getting used to this higher level. So I guess the question I would ask you is what are you noticing really? Like what's changed in the last two to three weeks for you? Or what isn't changing? Just notice, just maybe even pause this, maybe watch it again and pause this and write down some things as to what is it that's actually, that you're noticing that's happening. Because some of us are getting sicker weaker, angrier, um, hospitalizations, deaths, 
Um, and, and this is sort of what's happening when there's resistance, like, no, uh, uh, mm -mm, nope, nope. And we've talked about this just last week on now's not the time to double down, but that resistance is starting to create issues in our bodies. And some of us are getting calmer. We're adapting. Um, we're riding it more easily. And I can't even tell you how it happened, but for me to sort of have my physical world decide to change, whether it was uh, not renewing the lease, um, watching my coaching practice, you know, go on a little, a lot slower pace and going, I need to do something different. Whatever it was, it picked me up and put me where I could be around this every day. So when I get off work, I come down here and I sit here or I sit on Apgar Beach and Lake McDonald or I, you know, I it, pretty soon I'll have to be out there with my paddleboard just to be able to get onto the water and calm down, which is exactly what my system needs right now, right? So when we're riding and adapting and calm throughout all of this, um, you may notice that you're sleeping deeper at night. Um, you're making some really solid changes. Like the idea that I am doing something I wanted to do when I was 20 and doing it in my 60s is kind of fun, right? Um, shifting perspectives, like getting up onto a different altitude and going, oh, that's really not something I wanna worry about anymore. I used to think that was the biggest thing in the world and it's not anymore. And actually feeling physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually different. Those are the things that are going on right now. So because we're adapting, we're adjusting, we're absorbing, we're responding. I love that word responding, right? Um, to the, you know, these information and these frequencies, we're getting used to them. We're actually adapting. We've already adapted. That's probably the best way to say this. We've already begun or, be, or actually adapted. So we receive, we respond, we flow with this. Um, and we're generating this feminine energy and bringing our feminine energy into balance with our masculine. We're partnering with what used to be the task oriented masculine. We're now partnering that and bringing it into balance with our feminine. So our feminine's coming up, which is, you know, like, what do you do when frequency, something invisible starts to rattle your world? It isn't something physically that you can take a hammer and nail and go figure out how to fix it. It's actually something you have to absorb and receive and flow with. So our feminine is coming into balance with our masculine and we're being asked, sort of like even pushed towards, um, maybe even challenged to bring our systems into balance, right? We are being challenged, invited, pushed, um, nudged, whatever term you want to do into balance, right? So I have five tips for you today that um, about what to do when we want to create a balance in a world that's constantly changing. And I have this biplane doing a circle over the top. It's so cool. Um, number one, tip number one, what you resist will persist. We know this. We hear this all the time. When you resist something, it can even get bigger to make sure that it gets your attention. Whether it's a neck issue, whether it's a gut issue, whether it's a um, constant battle with someone at work, whether it is a reminder that you have, have, have become very different than the person you married or partnered with and you are not sure that this is sustainable, right? So now's the time to soften and let your body and your soul and your energy sort of move rather than stiffen up and, and try to resist. So, you know, let yourself be taken where you need to go. Let yourself be guided. Let yourself balance and flow into where you need to go. So what you resist will persist, so stop resisting, number one. Number two, piece together the cause and effect of resistance. When you're crunched down, when your stomach hurts, when you've got migraines, when you've got back pain, when you're angry at the person next to you, find out, whew, wow, am I being rigid? Am I trying to hold on to something? Am I trying to control something? Am I crunching down and, and, and holding on to this pain like a martyr? Like if I'm in pain, no one's paying attention to me as opposed to when I'm in pain, there's a message there that I'm in resistance about something or that a body part or the emotions around that body part are starting to talk to me. So piece together the cause and effect. 
this plane's really getting close. Look for the physical symptoms to take you there. Because if you go to the shoulder and then you explore what's going on with my left shoulder or my left side of my body or what's going on with my gut and digestion, then you can find out what the emotions are and you go, okay, now I know how to let go of that, right? <laughs> Number three, notice how many people, places, and things are just dropping off. People who stopped calling, jobs that just disappeared, um, the, uh, the, the way that a route home from work or the house that you live in is just not palpable anymore. You're like, oh, wow, I really thought I loved this at one time and now I can barely stand to be in it. So what's happening is we're experiencing the way that one world sort of shuts down and another one opens up. So the example I would use for me is that you know I'm living in a I'm living in nine by fifteen foot shed with a nice bunch of windows and fan electricity and everything in a camp with people who are in tents and on platforms and in yurts and and in RVs and so it's really really fun to sort of be this rural yet we're in a dip in a very low cell phone area so even when there's no Wi-Fi the ability to get cell coverage is limited so I can't watch videos on YouTube I can't download and stream movies I can't do anything that I used to do to distract myself at night right so instead of that I'm actually packing my stuff up and going and sitting at a river and reading a book or doing some journaling or just sitting there and watching people and what I notice is that the people places and things that are dropping off is this old lifestyle of for me and I'm just going to speak to me personally of over researching, studying all the time and staying up to date on everything. And now it's just sort of fallen away. As a matter of fact, yesterday, two days ago, the screen on my computer broke because I was taking it to Wi-Fi centers to do work and the screen broke and I just went, okay, <laughs> it looks like this is not in my highest interest to do this kind of research and work right now. So follow it, really look at the things that are dropping out or asking you to put them down because there's a message there. And then the number four, or number four, that's, Notice what's stepping forward. Notice who's showing up. Notice who calls. Notice what you like to do. Notice why you like to do it. Notice what relationship changes with your children, with your friends, with your body, with yourself, right? Because maybe you're expanding. Maybe your clairs are getting more open and you're knowing things and seeing things and trusting things better. All I know is that when that Schumann went to 190 and that DNA pattern was going across, there was an opening in the human energy system that hasn't happened before. So notice what kind of connections or dreams or, um, or, or um, how do we get beyond the, you know, I came from this background, this was my wound, this is my story, these are my pains. And you look at like what else there is for you to do. So look at what's stepping forward, right? Look at what's stepping forward. Um, I'm gonna put one new one in here. I'm gonna go to five tips because yesterday I started to do some research on millennials. So number five is go find a millennial. Go find them and find out what they're doing right now because they know how to flow, number one. They know how to respond to things and they all know how to follow a frequency much better than those of us who are boomers or Gen Xers. So I'm surrounded by millennial raft guides, office staff, um, you name it. And I'm blown away with how adaptive, how open and communicative they are in riding through this when the olders are kind of crunched in. So number five, go find a millennial and pattern that because I think they've got their finger on the pulse of all of this. And number five, have compassion. Oh wow, have compassion because compassion is the opposite of judgment. So if you're in judgment, bring in compassion. So if you're, you're being uh, critical um, and judgmental towards those around you, bring in compassion to yourself because we are all going through these changes. And get yourself outside. Get yourself outside and go play. So thanks, I will see you next week. If you want to contact me or write a comment or just let me know what you're noticing, you can put the comments down below. Take care, see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.